Hey guys, it's Jess from Alden Dancing. Um, I realized I didn't have a video explaining how I became an amputee. Um, I guess that's kind of a major part of why everyone is watching my blogs. Um, blogs, I'm not really sure what they're called, YouTube videos. Um, so I've had a Tumblr page for quite a few years now and the last couple years have really been devoted to my journey as an amputee and getting like a new system of prosthesis. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll just go back to the beginning. Um, so right before I turned two years old, I had meningitis. And more specifically, I had meningococcal septicemia. So basically, the meningitis I had affected my bloodstream only. And that sounds silly to say only because blood obviously goes through your whole body and whatnot. So um yeah, I wasn't getting the proper blood flow to my limbs, and most importantly, I wasn't getting blood flow to my legs very well. Um, I think rather quickly, and don't quote me on this, like I'm not a doctor, I don't remember what happened because I was so young, um, but pretty early on, while in my stay at the hospital, um, my legs turned completely black, and I started suffering from gangrene. So that was a problem. Um, the disease kind of presented itself with like purple spots kind of like all over my arms, my legs, my neck, whatever. My whole body were, was covered in these like purple spots that kind of look like chicken pox, I guess from like the photos I've looked at. Um, yeah, so I had a really high fever. I wasn't like, you know, I just wasn't myself and luckily my parents kind of like put two and two together and was like, you know, this is more serious than just like a regular cold or flu. So they took me in, they were racing me in. Like, I think my fever was like over 105 degrees. Like that is not good for a baby <laughs> or toddler, I guess I was. Um, so yeah, they get me to the hospital and luckily like the nurse that was kind of assigned to my case. Um, I think someone in her family had just had meningitis and so she kind of knew what to look for. Um, I don't know exactly how they like determine like, yes, you have meningitis. Um, I don't know if that's something I can just look at my chart and see, probably, but I don't really know. Um, yeah, so they like diagnosed me with meningitis and then I was admitted to like the ICU. I was um, like, even that first night, they were like, you know, she's probably not gonna make it like people with meningitis and particularly like the um like a blood disease with meningitis like you just don't survive it like it's just so hard to beat um i made it through the first night obviously because i'm here 28 late 28 years later um yeah so i made it through that first night and although i was still alive like the disease was still like totally affecting me um i think i mentioned already that my legs turned black um, and I started suffering from gangrene. So basically my legs were attached to my body but were almost completely dead. And to stop the disease from spreading further and to stop the like gangrenous spread, I don't really know what gangrene is besides that it's like rotting flesh <laughs> and it's just not good. It just dies. Like there's no coming back from that really, like for that particular where it's affected. I don't know. Um, yeah, so they decided like amputation was going to be best and I, I'm assuming like they tried other options like they tried blood transfusions and whatnot and ultimately it had to be amputation. They amputated more from my left leg than from my right um, and my right has like a knee and it has a little bit of bone past that. Um, the left leg is almost like above the knee but there's a bony protrusion kind of on the other underside that seems to me like a knee I used to be able to move it more freely as if it was a joint um, now not so much um, yeah I guess also with the meningitis um, it affected my arms and my face as you can see like I have scar tissue and I'm I mean at this point in my life like I've totally accepted it and for a while in my 20s, like, I wanted every scar gone from my face. Like, I just wanted them gone. I wanted to move forward. I wanted to just not have scars on my face. And 
excuse me. Um, it, there came a point when I was putting on makeup and I like I didn't recognize myself because there weren't the scars. And I mean, I'm glad some of the scars are fixed. Um, this scar here used to pull my lip more like that, more like a cleft palette. So it was nice that that one was fixed. Um, I mean, it wasn't a cleft palette. It was just a scar in the same place as typical cleft palettes happen. Um, also, the scar that is around my left eye, it kind of pulls down my lower lid. Um, and I had these two scars actually fixed at the same time initially. And the reason I got the plastic surgeon I did is that she is like a genius with cleft palettes. And she's actually just like a pediatrician plastic surgeon. And I used her for every surgery. Um, yeah, so those two were fixed at the same time. Um, my right arm, I don't know, it's kind of hard to film this. I mean, and you weren't shiny as scar tissue. Um, so the right arm had more, I guess, obviously scar tissue, more damage than the left arm. So I'm, I'm assuming this is how I kind of became left-handed. I'm not sure. I don't know if I was left-hand dominant as a toddler before I had meningitis, um, but that's really not important, I guess. Um, let's see, how else did meningitis affect me? Um, I never had to take medication after I was, like, released from the hospital. Like, I don't know if that is something that people who have, like, a terminal illness like meningitis have to deal with is, like, taking medication all the time. The only time I take like prescriptions is for pain and that is for when I like hurt my legs. And the reason my legs hurt so often is because 50% of the, the skin on my legs, I do that loosely because <laughs> it's mostly scar tissue. Um, yeah, so that's, it's not like, it's not malleable. It doesn't adjust as I'm adjusting. Um, like this tissue here, you can see that it like moves around. However, this tissue, okay, that's a bad example, but scar tissue does not move as freely. And so it's like, it stops and then a sore forms because it doesn't like, it can't stretch enough to like give enough give, I guess, in a way. Um, so that's kind of a downside of having so much scar tissue on your body. Um, I guess really the only other thing as far as meningitis that it affected me, hmm, lipstick, is that um, it kind of stunted my growth in a way. Like my, I didn't hit, hit puberty until I was like 16. I didn't even hit my growth spurt until I was like 21. And then all of a sudden I grew like three inches. Um, also my teeth, um, I had really poor teeth. Like I had braces for four and a half years and that was awful. <laughs> like that was all of high school and the first semester of college. Like, it was just really not cool. I mean, now, yes, obviously I have pretty good teeth. Or at least visu visually, um, they're pretty good. Uh, though my enamel is really bad. Like, I'm really pl prone to getting um, cavities. And my front two teeth are actually fake because since the meningitis affected me right as, like, major tooth development was happening, um... My front two teeth never grew in properly after my baby teeth fell out. They grew in half the way and there was like no enamel on them. And so, yeah, that was just not fun. And like in eighth grade, they did like a temporary cap system. And then after my braces came off, when I was 19 and a half, um, they did real caps and that was pretty horrible. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I guess the only thing I deal with obviously on a constant basis is that I'm an amputee and I have to just like make sure my legs are in good condition, make sure I'm not getting an infection so I don't have to amputate my limbs more. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall for surviving like a terminal illness that really changed my whole life, like it didn't really change it to the point that I have to take medication or I have to be in the hospital all the time. Like I am otherwise a totally healthy person. Like I don't, all I take are supplements and vitamins so, <laughs> and eat, obviously. But if I didn't answer any questions or really explain very well how I became an amputee, like pop those below, um, like this video, subscribe. I'm hoping to have more content now that I have, wait for it, my camera. 
Um, so yeah, that's exciting. Um, yeah. So I will see you guys soon. Bye.